So this is what I want to talk about next. How all this stuff started with me. All this started in 2010 when I was sitting in the house, minding my business, didn't know I was an alcoholic, I didn't know I was angry, I didn't know I was a veteran, I was unemployed, and a guy did this, knocked on my door. His name is Kelly. I said, Kelly, where you been at? He said, man, you know, I've been in treatment. I thought he was in jail. I hadn't seen him in so long, so he was like, look, I'm gonna take you down to the VA tomorrow. I'm looking like, what's the VA? Like, literally, I didn't even know what he was talking about. He said, you need to stop drinking. And I'm like, what? I said, you don't drink no more? He looked real clean, had gained some weight. You know, he was a Marine, he was a combat Marine. He, he was like, you need to stop drinking. So I said, Kelly, let's go to the bar and get a drink. I said, he said, no, we're not gonna drink. So he left, and the next morning, this what happened, I want y'all to listen. You ready to go? I'm looking at, I looked out the window on the second floor like, what are you talking about? He said, shit shaving beige so, soldier, let's go. So I identified with that. I already know what that means. You got five minutes to get it together. So I take a shower, brush my teeth, put some clothes on. He took me down to VA in Baltimore, Maryland. A hospital got me an ID card, a primary care doctor, a psychiatrist, and I never looked back because uh, truthfully speaking, I wanted to stop drinking, but I didn't know how. I've been drinking for 27 years. Now, I'll let y'all know something. It's by the grace of God, I got my spleen, my liver, and my kidney. I drink gallons of liquor for 27 years and beer. I'm a workaholic. And so drinking was part of my life. I, I've been clean since December the 1st, 2010. I have not had no cigarettes, no beer, no liquor since 2010. So. What happened was, he said, look, check this out. If you can't make it, let me know. But I need you to make these appointments, Dan. And I, I, I respected him because he was my man, 40 grand. We hung in the streets, we partied this, that, and third. And I'm like, why is you so adamant for me to come down here? And you know, I don't like people. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm not one of them guys, you know, that's gonna be hanging around a lot of people I don't know because I've been in the street for 27 years, no days off. I'm just letting you know what it is. I always had a job, but I don't like being around people that look like they're gonna cause a problem because it, it's gonna be a problem. You know, whatever problem you want it to be, it will be a problem. That was my thought process back then. I come, I'm from East Baltimore. I don't have an inside voice. I'm dark skinned. And when I was raised, raised up, people used to pick on dark skinned people because, you know, back then light skin was in and dark skin was out. <laughs> That's how I was. And you basically had to fight people in the hood. I'm just telling y'all what it is. I'm from Greenmount Avenue, Greenmount 27. So, you know, I come up in the neighborhood, you had to, you had to put those up, you know what I mean? And we even run whatever you want to do. So, you know, you even fight or run. We didn't did all that. So, I'm just letting you know my thought process. So, I respected him so much. He signed me up for these groups. I wasn't working anyway. So, I used to walk from my house in East Baltimore to the VA to make the meetings. And some of the meetings were eight o'clock in the morning. I said, well, you know, I'm just gonna walk down there, whatever, you know what I mean? So I will walk down there and try to get my mind right, but I'm, I'm trying to get off this alcohol. That was a struggle. I'm trying to understand why Kelly keep on calling me up to come down to the VA to go to these groups and he's sitting in these groups and it clicked. I said, you know what? I need to stop drinking. I am an alcoholic, but I really didn't realize I was an alcoholic. So I was in the father's group, the women's group, um, spirituality group. The, the relationship group, the group, I can't think of the name of the word where you um, deal with your children. I've been in over 32 VA groups and I've been inpatient twice. Put myself inpatient. So let's get to this. I'm down there. He said, what I need you to do is sign up for the compensation and pension group every Wednesday. Now mind it, it's going on 2011. I'm going on like eight months in this thing and I'm committed because he's my man 40 grand and I want y'all to hear this y'all not gonna believe this sometimes when I was in them groups I used to turn around and look and he would be sitting in the back and he would put his thumb up like this I say like, oh my god you you was applying pressure I'm be honest with y'all I couldn't beat him he, you know he's a marine he was in shape I wasn't in shape I already know he can fight I already know he had 
other set of skills getting people off the earth from being in the military. That's his skill set. He was in Marine Corps. He'd been in there. You understand what I'm saying? But he was so adamant with me um, not consuming alcohol and my inappropriate behavior and my inappropriate thought process. I didn't know I was inappropriate. I didn't know I was an alcoholic. I didn't know I was angry. I didn't know I had a mental disorder. I didn't know none of that. I had to learn this. So he said, what I need you to do is sign up. I follow instructions. So this, this is instructional based, information based and research based conversation we have right now. So he said, go to the group. Jamal, sit up front shut up and take notes. I said, all right, Kelly, you ain't got to say it twice. You already raised your voice 10 times in the last 10 minutes. I got it. So what I did, I set up in front and the guy that was running the group was Trevor Lane. I'm saying, why is this white guy showing all these black folks how to get money? That never made no sense to me. So I'm in there taking notes. He's on the chalkboard. He's talking, blah, blah, blah. So like after about, let's say, eight weeks in this group, Every Wednesday from, I think it was from 1 to about 2.30, their group stayed packed. I sat up front. So I said to Trevor, I said, can you do me a favor? Can you help me with my paperwork? He said, gave me, wrote on a piece of paper, this is what I need you to do. I need you to go order these records. I follow instructions. A couple weeks later, my military records came to me. I didn't even know what I was looking at. I said, this must be what we're talking about. I take the paperwork back to Trevor Lane. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Trevor was doing so many people paperwork that V gave him an office in a hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. He was in the cafeteria, had lines of people. I'm like, why the hell? What is, what is going on? I didn't know what compensation and pension was. I didn't know that you get a check for your disabilities. So when he explained to me, he looked at my records. He was like, look. You need to do this, this, and this. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You need to do this, this, and this. I never questioned nothing. He wrote up my paper, handwritten that paper. He said, now go to 31 Hopkins Plaza, put that in the system. I said, okay. He said, make sure you get copies and make sure they date stamp that paper. You ain't gotta tell me twice. Also, what he said to me, he said, check this out. If you do this right, your kids can go to college for free. I said, are you serious? My children go to college for free. If I put this paperwork in the system, oh, we gonna make this happen. I got four daughters. I got three sons, but one of them is deceased. That's another part of my trauma. So I took the paperwork after meeting Trevor three times, put it in the system. You people are not gonna believe this. In five months, I was 70%. My first percentage was 70, second 80, next 90, next 100. I walk, we walked that down in less than a year and a half. Dead serious, I follow instructions. So he was like, look, I end up, when I got my 70% from the VA, I was inpatient at Perry Point VA Medical Hospital in Perry Point, Maryland in Cecil County for undiagnosed mental health condition, alcoholism, and a chronic anger because I'm the guy, that, I'm the dude to take flight. You can't, you can't, you can't push up on me. I'm, I'm, I'm just that dude. There's none of that. We know I'm in the inner city. People doing all kinds of crazy mess. But you, you know, you, you want to come over messing with me? You're gonna see the other side of me. And we haven't been in anything since 2010. I have not been incarcerated. I have not been in a fist fight. I have not been in no altercation since 2010. Praise the Lord, because you know it got pretty, pretty ugly over there. You know, sitting over Central Booking with the with the uh, hot milk and the, and the bologna sandwich and no women <laughs> that ain't the place to be i'm trying to tell you that I, I already been there ain't nobody you can't nobody say oh you didn't do a bit you can't tell me nothing about no daggone jails this dude been locked up i never did a bit by the grace of god god was like you know what i'm gonna let you out here one more time get yourself together get your mind right and i was like you know what god I, I, something's gonna come down the line for me help me get my mind right but that's part of the journey in the story because alcohol is a drug too. I'm letting all y'all know that. For y'all ones that think alcohol ain't no drug, alcohol is a drug. I'm letting y'all know that. So he said, this is what I need you to do. I said, what do you need me to do? He called me, he said, when I call you, this is, I want you to do what I exactly I tell you to do. I said, all right, Trevor. So Trevor called me up at one o'clock in the morning and said, look, I need you to go to the ER. TV show is to educate the veterans, the general public, and family members on how to navigate the Veterans Benefits Administration 
the Health Administration of Veterans Affairs. I'm presenting to the general public and the world 